Hey guys, welcome back to Poor Man's Guides. Uh, this time I'll be talking about vertical access wind turbines. Uh, but just a little bit, because I want to show you a calculator uh, that I've been working on for VAWT, is what they call it, vertical access wind turbine, V-A-W-T. Now most people uh, call those Savonias, but Savonias typically is just you know, like a, a cylinder cut in half, like you see in this picture. And uh, they just like a barrel, and they cut the barrel in half and slide the two halves apart. And it catches the wind in one direction only. It's not very efficient, maybe 15% efficient. Uh, a good bit of torque, uh, but very low RPM. And like I said, 15 or so percent efficient. Now, there are other kinds of vertical access turbine. Like this is a modified Savonius. It's got three blades. Uh, maybe slightly more efficient, um, but not much. Another type of vertical access would be something like this. Um, still not a lift type, like a, a Darius or something like that, where you actually have lift on the blades. This is just a, still a drag type. Uh, probably still roughly 20%, maybe a little more. <clears throat> if you get one where you may have something like uh, wind directors that uh, focus the wind on just half the machine so that... Uh, you don't get as much drag against the wind on the on the opposing side. Uh, you can actually get the efficiency uh, up above 30 percent, especially if they're lift type vertical access wind turbines. Uh, possibly you can get up to 35, even 40 percent if, if done properly. So there's just different designs out there. Now I'm not going to go over over the designs. Um, right now I'm working on a new book for a, a very simple vertical access wind turbine. Uh, that's roughly 20 to 25 percent efficient and uh, in the meantime what I've done is I've, I've made a, a vault windmill calculator and this can be found on uh, http www.poormanguides.net slash vawt.html and that's where you can find this it's just a free windmill calculator and basically you, you pick your battery voltage that you're going to charge I have 12, 24, or 48, and uh, also I, I jump up to 120 and 240, and that's for grid tie. Basically, if uh, let's say you want to gear this thing up a lot and you want to run, let's say an AC induction motor, and actually let's say you use an old washing machine motor, and you want to plug it in directly to an outlet, there's a way to set this up, and that's going to be in my new book. Uh, that talks about uh, grid tie. It'll actually put mu put uh, energy back into your house, and if you produce more energy than you're using at the time, then it'll spin your meter backwards. If you have a new enough new enough meter that will spin backwards, some places don't have that. But uh, if if anything else, if nothing else, it'll it'll offset your electric bill. Um, I prefer to have batteries in my system. Just you know when. When the grid goes down, I like to have some battery backup. That's just me. Now, you can do grid tie with battery. That's possible, too, and I'll be talking about that in the book as well. Uh, so let's look at this uh, windmill calculator. Basically, you pick your battery voltage. Now, what I'm doing here is I'm, I'm assuming 12 volts. So I'm just going to go with the motor that I have. Um, I'm going to start with 32-inch blade width, blade height of 60 inches. I just started with a 4 to 1 gear ratio. Um, you know, so that means if my, my motor generator has a 2-inch diameter a pulley on it, then I'll have an 8-inch diameter pulley on my windmill. So, you know, that's just what that means there. And I'm going to go up to 30 mile an hour winds. Now, you can change this to whatever you want, uh, you know, to test different, like, whatever the wind conditions are. If your average wind speed is 15, then you can put that in to see what your average power would be. Uh, put tip speed ratio here. It's 0.8 for a typical Savonius. Now, if you have a lift type, like a Darius or something like that, where the blades are actually airfoils and they 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 generate lift, you can get uh, you know several you know you can get two, three, four TSR, uh, maybe more. Now, with this motor, I have a 17 amp motor. It's 130 volts and it's 3200 RPM. Now, for the design I'm going to make, it's roughly 20, maybe 25% efficient. And uh, all I do is hit Compute. 
And what it does, it fills out the bottom here. It says windmill RPM at this wind speed. Now that's 30 miles an hour. I get 252 RPMs. Uh, estimated watts is 157. And estimated amps to the battery is 11.7. And that's at 12 volts. Um, max output the motor you know, from the motor before it burns up is 569 watts. Uh, and max amps the motor can withstand is 42.5. The cut-in RPM, that's, that's when it starts to charge a 12-volt battery through a diode and assuming a 12.7-volt battery uh, plus a 0.7-volt drop, you, you have a cut-in RPM of 82 RPMs. Now, based on my gear ratio of 4 to 1, I have a cut-in speed of 9.7 miles an hour. Anything below 11, the program likes anything below 11, so, but you don't want to make it too low. You want to get it close to 10 or 11 miles an hour. Uh, too low and you're basically gearing up too much and it's too hard to start. So you don't want to gear it up, you know, 40 to 1 and not have enough torque to do it. Uh, at the bottom here it says, notice the max amps the motor can withstand are higher than its rated capacity. This is due to the cooling effect of the wind. And basically, the resin coating on the copper wires inside the motor can only withstand so many amps and so much heat. But if you have a cooling effect, um, and it's something I wanted to point out here is uh, the weather conditions here at the top. It says weather conditions. Hot, moderate, or cold. It defaults to moderate. Uh, in a hot condition, notice what happens is the, uh, the max output from the motor before it burns up drops to 455. If I go to cold conditions and recompute, it goes up to 683. So your maximum amps that the motor can withstand actually goes up uh, the colder the air is. Which is good because in the winter time the air is cold, it's more dense, you have more available power in the wind because it's more air molecules per given cubic foot. And also it uh, <clears throat> it helps cool the motor off, the generator, so it's less likely to burn up. So you know you get a double effect in the winter. Anyway, as you can see, that's a, this is a 30 inch wide, 30, 32 inch wide and blade height of 60 inches. So it's <clears throat> you know not really big. I wouldn't say it's really big, but uh, to get any decent power from, from a Savonius, it, uh, it has to be bigger than a typical uh, horizontal axis wind turbine. Uh, but the good, the good news is you can mount them almost anywhere. You can put them on your roof. You can put them just outside on the edge of your building, just on a corner of your house. Uh, you could put one on every corner of your house if you wanted to. And it doesn't care about uh, turbulent wind. See, most windmills uh, it's really bad on the on the the bearings when it's constantly getting uh, wind changes. You know, turbulent wind changes in direction and speed. The Savonius or the the vertical doesn't care. You know, it can come from any direction. It'll work. It does. It doesn't hurt the bearings. Uh, turbulence just doesn't matter. So yeah, you don't get as much power. But if you have a normal windmill that's only 10 feet off the ground or too close to your house, then you're not getting a lot of power anyway, and your bearings are going to are just not going to last as long. <clears throat> so anyway, I'll uh, I'll come out with some more of these just to show you how this works, and you can go here and try it out. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. It's uh, real easy to use. I'll uh, when I come out with the book, hopefully in a couple of months. I'm not sure how long it's going to take me to to finish testing and uh, to get all the stuff set up, but it'll talk about grid tie, and I think that's pretty important to a lot of people is uh, being able just to plug it into an outside outlet and have it offset your your energy cost. Uh, now you can still have a battery system in that type of setup. What you do is you use your AC outlet to charge a battery bank with an inverter uh, as your backup power. It's just a complete backup system. But at the same time all your AC power is offset by your windmill that's grid tied. So you can still do battery uh, but you have some efficiency losses doing that. If you just want pure efficiency you're probably probably looking at just grid tie and no battery. You know, that's that's pure efficiency. Uh, but if you're looking at practicality, I think everyone needs a battery backup. Anyway, that's that's all for now and uh hope you enjoy the video. Thanks.